your tent upon for Tuesday, April the 7th. Do not leave me in the will of my foes, O Lord, for false witnesses rise up against me, and they breed out violence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, prepare our hearts more worthy for these saving mysteries. Let us pause, call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made, me, he made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing uselessly spent my strength. Yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he said, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing of your salvation. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will, I will sing, sing of your, your salvation. salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. For, you are, for you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss to whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him and to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, 
son of Simon the Iscariot. After, Simon, after Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he had said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he, w when he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. He will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus said to him, Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we enter more and more deeply into Holy Week and prepare for these great events of, of our salvation, we're also faced ultimately with the, the chaos that, that was existing before. And we're faced also with one of probably the most difficult burdens on Jesus' heart throughout all of this. It is the, the, I guess, the predicament of Judas. Judas is one of the twelve that Jesus himself picked. Our Lord and Savior, God himself, picked twelve men to be at his side, to be with him, to accompany him, to endow them with that priestly spirit, to go and bring salvation to the poor, to, to announce good news, to free those who, who were in bondage, to raise the dead. He endowed these 12 men with these powers. But he also knows in his heart, one of them will betray him. One of them will look at him in the face, spit upon that gift, and literally throw it back at him. And that's that predicament that weighs on the heart of Jesus and really weighs on the heart of, of all Catholics. When we experience and we see evil things that have happened in the church, darkness that have taken place, we can't attribute it to a corruption of the church entirely. It's the Judas syndrome. It's what we saw from the beginning. That yes, the heart of man himself is weak. As St. Paul says, we carry this treasure in earthen vessels. Man is weak. Man is tempted. Man can again and again be, be led into sin. Even with that great gift, even with the great desire that Christ has, that we would overcome that and we would cling to Him, man can still fall. But in the face of that, Jesus, one, still calls. Jesus still provides. And Jesus still promises mercy. Because we see, in, we see at the end of this gospel another event. We see Jesus again knowing that the one that He is called to be His leader that he is called to be preeminent amongst all the apostles, will deny him three times. Will deny him three times. But there is something different. Judas would never look back. Judas would throw the coins at the, at the Pharisees after he betrayed Jesus and would run and go hang himself. He would never look back. Peter would. Peter would ultimately come and face Jesus at the resurrection, would allow that gaze of Jesus to look into him and say, Peter, do you love me? Three times he would ask him. And Peter would respond, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Peter would repent. And that is really where we're all supposed to be. Yes, to sin is human. To persist in sin is devilish. Each one of us will have sin. Each one of us will have different burdens. Each one of us in our own way will at some time or other betray the Lord. There will always be sin and sinners in the church. But there will always be above and beyond mercy. There will always be God's mercy who continues to rest with us. Who continues to, again, use those opportunities of sin 
to enter in our hearts. We were here in but a, a little bit more than a week's time on Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus will appear before all these men, will appear before Peter who denied him, and will hold up those wounds. Those same wounds that basically were inflicted because of their unfaithfulness. He won't show it to them to, to scorn them. He won't show it to them to guilt them. But he will show it to them because these are now the fonts of mercy. It's through these signs that the mercy will now touch humankind. And so we too are to look at our own sins as how God's mercy will flow to us and that how in recognizing our weakness we will be channels to others. So let us continue to be above all like John, this beloved disciple who rested his hand on the heart of Jesus. Many times that's what we have to do. When we see our weakness, when we see our sinfulness, we, we, we are not to run from them. We're not to try and hide them under, under some kind of a bush, hoping the Lord doesn't see them. Sometimes we have to simply rest on Jesus' heart. I know this one person who struggled with several different difficulties and, and disorders and, and, and sins and everything. And when they would be going through this, they would say simply, the Lord wanted them to just rest on his heart so that he could poke their wounds, just touch those wounds. And that's what John does. He just says, yes, Lord, I am wounded. And he lets himself rest not on his own strength, but on the Lord. And he lets the Lord touch his wounds. As we come closer to Good Friday, let us put that same mindset. Let us, when we see our sinfulness, not be afraid to recognize them. Let us rest our head on the Lord's chest, that he may touch our wounds, and that prayerfully we also may be able to place our hands into his wounds. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for the goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, we come for us, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on, those, on these offerings of your family. And to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their holiness, in their fullness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, and Gregory our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Let's in grace through the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, be kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the, the sins, sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. For those who cannot receive communion at this time, I invite you to pray a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy Eucharist. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the final blessing, a few things. First of all, to Lauren Rochelle, on your 31st birthday, happy birthday from your mother. Also, we are entering into Holy Week, probably one of the most strange Holy Weeks we'll ever have. Um, a few things, many churches are going to be, we will still be having Holy Thursday and these, these celebrations, but obviously they won't be public. So know that they will be offered to, and invite in your own way to, to make these prayers, make your own ways of the cross, um, finding time to be with your family to, to offer prayer. Um, special invitation, I'm still trying to look and figure out where it'll be or how to actually access it, but on Holy Saturday, the, the the Basilica in Turin that has the Shroud of Turin will unveil it for a very special event. Normally, they only unveil the Shroud of Turin once every every 50 years, but they're going to be unveiling it on Holy Saturday at 5 p.m. In, in Italy time for a prayer service. So I encourage you to kind of look and fit, find different ways, maybe where it'll be broadcasted, but to tune into that, it'll be very beautiful. They'll have it exposed to just people to visually and, and virtually pray along with it. So keep your eyes open for that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.